Tuesday, November 25th. Tonight, a special program is helping young African-American males develop STEM skills. Next on North Carolina Now. North Carolina Now is made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. The North Carolina Cooperative Extension feature in this episode of North Carolina Now is produced by UNCTV in association with North Carolina Cooperative Extension. Good evening, I'm Erica Stark-Knight. Thanks for joining us. Tonight on North Carolina Now, we'll preview a new documentary looking at the life of American literary icon Zora Neale Hurston. But first, there's a school in Durham that is targeting low-income African-American boys, not those who are failing, but those who have measured potential to succeed. Producer Carol Jackson has the story. In this Durham classroom, middle school kids are learning robotics. Today, they're building windmills. Each student dreamed up a design. There's been a vote, and now the best blueprints are being built. Neil Magnet Middle is the only school in Durham, and one of a few in the state, that's implemented a special curriculum that focuses on science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM. These are some STEM careers that could dramatically change the quality of your lifestyle, um, depending on what type of job you have. Were any of those windmills, blades, different sizes? Teacher no. Ursula Jones all wants all the children in the STEM program to succeed, but she's particularly focused on young black men. Dante, all right, I need you to take your coat off, put on this shirt, and then grab your book. Every morning, the first period of the day, Ms. Jones mentors this class of 30 boys. Today, they're buzzing because they receive new shirts, ones that indicate that they're part of an elite program within the STEM Academy. They're STEM scholars. Each one of these young men is here because he's been assessed using special software designed by SAS. The software gauges a student's potential for academic success. The question on the board says, and I thought, can have your attention, guys. Multiply the following fractions. Be sure to simplify your answers. Two thirds. So basically what I do is I work with the, the seventh grade math teachers. They fill out a progress monitoring form for me based on the homework and the tests and things they, they take in class. And then I look at that data and decide what I'm going to pull out and focus on doing advisory on math on Mondays. The goal is to make the students proficient or above proficient in math. Our goal is to push them um, to the point where they are being successful and, and mastering everything that they need for seventh grade. Little book did you read? Sound? So you're going to want to tell us uh, in two or three sentences what happened in the book. The mentoring program covers STEM topics as well as literacy. Ms. Jones has paid a yearly stipend to keep a close eye on each boy's progress in every class he takes. They took their common assessments about two or three weeks ago and we progress monitor them, and so we have a little form that teachers fill out so that we can see how they are studying, if they're completing their homework, are they organized, because we know that these things help determine if they're going to be successful in school. My name is Devin Smith. I'm 12 years old. My teachers all chose me and a few other kids about, not about, but for our grades and our good um, manners, and that we're going to be a successful, successful young man later on in life. This is Devin's first year of the program. For him, the fact that it's all boys, that matters. I'm not saying I don't get along with girls, but girls, they kind of like, they kind of like do their own thing. Boys, they're the same, and like, you can have like the same connection to them. This will bring us together as a brotherhood, almost. That's why it's all boys. STEM Scholars was started by this man, Howard Lee. Lee is a two-term mayor of Chapel Hill and a former North Carolina senator. We met at his home. He's 80 years old now, and he still cares deeply about educational issues. His passion is addressing the crisis facing young black men at school. The problem, he says, seems to start after the fifth grade. And we identify high potential, underserved, low-income students 
who generally are placed in less rigorous courses in both middle and high school because of their zip code. People just tend to think they're incapable of doing honors course work and therefore don't put them in the honors courses. These youngsters must show that they have the potential. We're not going out and looking for failing students. If students are failing in the elementary school, uh, the expense for our trying to recover that youngster is just too great. We want kids who have the skill, who have the commitment, who are willing to work hard, and we know can succeed if indeed they put forth the effort. We've got to train these kids how to swim with the sharks and still survive because when they go into high school, they will be challenged on why they're so smart. Oh, what's the reason for them setting the, what we used to call when I was in school, setting the curve too high, making too good a grade. They've got to learn how to survive that kind of pressure of people being ready to, to cut them down. Howard Lee was raised on a farm in rural Georgia during the Jim Crow era. His grandparents were sharecroppers and his mother was a teacher. My mother would take me to school because she was teaching in a one-room schoolhouse. And uh, she found that at the end of the year, while I had the highest grades, she thought I didn't put forth the complete effort. So she kept, held me back in the first grade. And her reasoning was that if any time I had an opportunity, I had to do my best, and that was all she would accept. Howard Lee aims to instill that same ethic, that thirst for knowledge and for doing one's best, into the young men who are accepted into the STEM Scholars Program. I'm more of a sports person, so I'm trying to make it to the NFL, NBA, but my fallback career will be an engineer. Yeah, I heard engineers make a lot of money. I have been really blessed with a wonderful family and success that I could not have dreamed of growing up in the South in the 30s and the 40s. And uh, I think that I've been left here and allowed to achieve this level for a reason. And that reason is to pay forward, is to pay back what has been made available to me. STEM Scholars is funded by grants and private donations. The program is expanding across the state in middle and some high schools. And you can find out more, including information about the SAS software that evaluates the likelihood of student success, on our website. This story was produced in cooperation with North Carolina Public Radio. And another program working to educate people here in our state is the North Carolina Cooperative Extension.